Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Thank you for joining Shaded's Ramadan series where we are extracting the beautiful life lessons that we can take from the story of Yusuf salam, which takes us to the next lesson, lesson number 16, which talks about taqwa and how taqwa opens up doors. Throughout the story of Yusuf salam, there is a heavy emphasis on the importance of taqwa and how crucial it is for and part of a Muslim's character, as demonstrated by both Yaqub and his beloved son Yusuf To truly understand the term taqwa though, which is commonly translated to God consciousness, there is a need to realize and inspect the framework in the linguistic aspect and the root of it, which is wiqaya. The word wiqaya itself means to guard and to protect oneself from all that is evil, harmful, or sinful, in turn indicating that taqwa must also encompass this, alongside an active awareness of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So being conscious of Allah is what will help us in doing or not doing things, either walking towards Allah or making sure we stay away from things that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he was no stranger to emphasizing the importance of this awareness and mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And among his many advices, his advice to Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, was, O oh, ibn Abbas, be conscious and be cautious or mindful of Allah wherever you might be, and you will find him there. That the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is telling him, be conscious of Allah and have taqwa wherever you are, in your public affairs or in your private affairs, and you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there for you. Now this may seem simple in theory. It is often very difficult to remind ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is present and aware of all that we know and know not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. And nothing is hidden from him. He knows what we don't know. And he knows what we know as well. And behind closed doors, it is easy to delude ourselves into believing that no one knows except those that are in the room. Nobody is aware except those that are involved. But we can't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everywhere we are. And this is a very same delusion that clouded the judgment of the minister's wife. The wife of Al-Aziz. When she was overcome by Yusuf Aislam's beauty and attempted to seduce him, it demonstrated that with no shadow of a doubt that she bolted the doors and said, come to me. She did not at this time think of her husband, think of a Lord, think of anything. She didn't think even of the aftermath of that act and what's going to happen to Yusuf Aislam or her. She just wanted him, she was indulging in a desire, and she planned to have it executed. So she bolted the doors and said to him, come to me. What is important to note of here is the emphasis on the way the door was closed. It wasn't just any particular way where she just closed the door behind them and she entrapped him in the room. She bolted the doors and she planned accordingly so she can have her privacy with Yusuf salam. The doors were not just shut or a blockade put, but rather they were bolted in a way that indicates that there is absolutely no way out unless active efforts were put to open them again. In this very moment, the human instinct of the desire and temptation could very well overtake any person. Now say for example, this is amongst those that were shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is a man that is uh, approached by a woman and allowed to have access to her and he refrains out of consciousness of God. The only thing that stops him is that consciousness and he says, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is in fact something Yusuf salam did. She was beautiful. He had an opportunity to have her. She welcomed herself to him and he wanted to get out. So you could only imagine the desire and the temptation that could ever overtake him. But for Yusuf salam, it was his taqwa that really saved him. It was his God consciousness that saved him from his own self. For he would have succumbed to her if he had not seen evidence, burhan, from his Lord. 
As mentioned, if we want to avoid committing a sin, it is in our best interest to leave the place of evil. Wherever that evil is encouraged, we are to leave that place. And this is exactly the choice of Yusuf, a.s. That's, this is the choice he made as he did not try to persuade her or even push her or even hit her or yell at her. He turned around and he tried to make an effort to leave. This is where we see they raced for the door and she tore his shirt from the back. This moment of hardship came with its rightful ease and he was rewarded for his taqwa as they met her husband right at the door. SubhanAllah, she tried her best to plan accordingly that when her husband leaves, she is sep uh, alone with Yusuf salam, but something inspired her husband to come back and they found her husband right at the door. Now though, when you first look at this situation, you don't see anything good about the Aziz coming and meeting him at the door after seeing such an act, but it was actually a reward. It was actually something good that happened. Is to be found to be comprising situation by the minister, but we must remember that the doors were bolted shut and there was nothing short of a miracle that with no need for a key, the great effort to the doors opened and Yusuf salam was discovered and was found a way out. This gave him a way out. So either he could indulge in something or fight to, to, to prevent himself from doing an evil or he had something else relieve him. And this is where his taqwa opened the door. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent her husband and he found him right at the door. Now taking this into account allows us the realization that by having taqwa, having taqwa, doors are opened by who? They're opened by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most literal sense of the word. And Yusuf salam made the active decision to avoid the sin with a conscious awareness of his presence. And though it was not the easiest situation to be in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala physically helped him out. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that helped him out completely. And in the very same way, when we are faced with trials and difficulties and tribulations, which threaten to shake us to our very core and test everything we stand for, an awareness of the, of the one and only Allah is super important. Like when you see the courage and the steadfastness and the patience of our brothers and sisters in Gaza today, you see it because they're God conscious. That's deep rooted in their heart. It's uttered on their tongue and enacted upon with the limbs. This is the level that we want to build to. That we know Allah everywhere we are. And we're mindful of Allah everywhere we are. And this will help us in doing good and refraining from evil. This is what we need. Now on the darkest of days and during the toughest of trials, take heart in knowing that Allah will find a way out for those who are mindful of him. This is a verse in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shared with us, telling us that as long as we are mindful of Allah, even if we're going through the toughest of trials and the toughest of tribulations, that He is with us along the way. And if we are reminded of Him and mindful of Him, He will help us in ways we can't even imagine. Please stay tuned for more life lessons from Surah Yusuf alayhi salam. Jazakumullah kul khair. And thank you for your time. And I pray that you have a blessed day.